We will be presenting on the LBO transaction of HD Supply, a division of the Home Depot. The transaction took place in June of 2007. The Home Depot is the largest consumer home improvements retailer in the United States, with 1,872 stores in the United States and 228 stores internationally as of 2006. From 2004 to 2006, revenue grew from $73.1 billion to $90.8 billion. HD Supply is the Atlanta-based wholesale distribution arm of the Home Depot. HD Supply provides construction and maintenance products in four major areas, including infrastructure, construction, maintenance, and repair and remodel. As of 2006, there were 830 locations in the United States and 63 international locations. HD Supply was built through more than 40 acquisitions. Net sales in 2006 were $12.1 billion, an increase of 162% from the previous year. There is a high level of competition in the highly fragmented U.S. home improvement and professional supply industry. As of 2006, HD Supply held an estimated 10% market share. Competitors include major suppliers such as Ferguson and Granger, but also regional and industry-specific suppliers such as Standard Plumbing Supply and Codell Electric Supply. Home Depot's rationale for the sale of HD Supply was due to a couple of different reasons. Uh, one being the extreme decline in the housing and home construction market, which dropped 24% from the previous year. Home Depot also wanted to finance a $22.5 billion stock buyback in order to improve its stock performance, as well as focus on improving and maintaining its retail stores to keep up with its main competitor lows. The consortium had realized HD Supply's potential for higher profit margins and overall profits in a fragmented market. It would seek to take advantage of economies of scale by lowering costs of goods while becoming more efficient through investments in IT and logistics. By doing this, the consortium would have the potential to push HD Supply into the largest wholesale supplier in North America. The fund participants in the buyout of HD Supply consisted of three private equity firms. The consortium included Bain Capital, the Carlisle Group, and Clayton Dublier and Rice. Bain Capital LCC is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts, where it was founded in 1984. This private equity firm specializes in investments of growth capital and recapitalization, as well as leveraged buyouts. With offices located in seven countries, its primary focus includes Europe, China, and the United States, as where it invested $66 billion in assets. The Carlyle Group was founded in 1987 and is headquartered in Washington, D.C., where the private equity firm specializes in equity private placements, leveraged buyouts, strategic minority equity investments, as well as venture and growth capital findings. The Carlisle, the Carlisle Group has raised over $148 billion in assets and is recognized as the third largest private equity firm behind Goldman Sachs and TPG Capital. The final private equity firm involved in the buyout of HD Supply is Clayton, Dublier, and Rice, headquartered in New York City. CD&R was founded in 1978, making it one of the oldest private equity firms. The firm specializes in buyouts of growth and capital fi financings of mature and underperforming companies and middle market investments. CDNR currently has $65 billion in assets under management. Home Depot agreed to sell HD supplies to the consortium on June 9, 2007 for $10.3 billion. Because of credit restrictions and marketing conditions, the deal had to be restructured. Home Depot agreed to reduce the price by 18% to $8.5 billion. Each buyout firm agreed to commit additional capital. HD Home Depot agreed to a $12.5 billion equity stake for $325 million. In addition, Home Depot lent $1 billion to the consortium in the form of senior notes. Lehman Brothers, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Merrill Lynch were all involved in the transaction, providing $7.25 billion. The transaction closed on August 30, 2007, with a termination fee of $310 million. The three, the three buyout partners all committed equal amounts of capital. They each invested $666 million and received roughly a 29% equity stake. The high yield bond breaks down with a $1 billion senior loan from Home Depot, as I mentioned earlier, along with a $2.5 billion uh, senior loan with and a $1.3 billion uh, loan in the form of subordinated notes, totaling $4.8 billion in bonds. The consortium also arranged term loans with two revolving loans and a secure term loan. The first revolving loan was an asset-based revolver for $2.1 billion. The second, a cash flow revolving loan for $300 million. Lastly, the consortium arranged a $1 billion secure term loan, totaling $3.4 billion in term loans.
In 2007, HD Supply had an EBITDA of 947 million, resulting in an 8.97 times EBITDA multiple for the transaction. HD Supply's revenue in 2007 was $12.3 billion. This acquisition implied that the enterprise value to revenue of 0.7 times. There are many regulatory and legal issues surrounding a merger and acquisition transaction. In order for a merger and acquisition to occur, the transaction must be approved by the Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice. The FTC must follow the Hart Scott Robino Antitrust Improvements, and the DOJ must follow the International Anti Bribery and Fair Consumption Act. HSR requires that all information about an M&A must be disclosed as well as the parties involved must submit a notification about the possibility of a merger. The Inter International Anti-Bribery and Fair Consumption Act states that a company cannot seek an advantage from a public official or a country. To deal with the legal matters associated with the buyout, they hired a legal counsel consisting of members from De Broy and Clinton LLP. They were responsible for making sure that all tax and accounting issues were in line with the law so that the deal would be able to go through. The buyout for Home Depot supply was eventually approved, and the buyout was announced on June 19, 2007, with a tax rate of 35%. At the time of the buyout, Home Depot had an average P.E. ratio of 15, price to book of 3.14, a net profit margin of 6.7, a, value per a book value per share of $12.71 and a debt to equity ratio of 0.47. Home Depot was well positioned to be able to take advantage of the $22.5 billion stock buyback. The debt to equity ratio today for Home Depot sits at 0.61, slightly higher than what it was in 2007. Return on equity was 21%, return on assets was 10.1% in 2007, and interest coverage was 22.7. Today, that interest coverage is just at 11.8. This ratio represents the earning from continuing operations divided by interest expense. The current ratio in 2007 was 1.39. The average current ratio for the industry in 2007 was 1.08, much lower than Home Depot's current ratio. Today, Home Depot has a current ratio of 1.5, demonstrating an increase in current assets over current liabilities. Home Depot had, in 2007, about $5 billion more in current assets than in current liabilities because of their plans to complete a stock buyback. The Home Depot and HD Supply are both cyclical companies and are greatly affected by the national economy, as can be seen from the graph comparing the S&P 500 and, and Home Depot. In 2007, Net sales of HD Supply fell to $7.4 billion, down from the $12.1 billion from the previous year. Fiscal year 2008 included a $163 million pre-tax write-down of Home Depot's investment in HD Supply and a $52 million loss from dis discontinued operations net of tax for the settlement of working capital for the sale of HD Supply. In fiscal 2009, the Home Depot determined its equity interest in HD Supply was further impaired and recorded an additional charge of $163 million to write down the remaining investment. The investment was fully written down. The Home Depot was only able to finance about half of the planned stock repurchase. Thank you.